pressure is really on. You've got the pros versus the boss. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot on the line here, Matt. Yeah, it was a it was a late start last night, and um, we started talking watts per kilos. And I thought it was a bit late to get him to do an FTP test, um, so we just went with C grade. We figured that would be good. Maybe if he if he went off in the first group, he might. Uh, he's quite a fast starter, so uh, we'll have to see how he goes. Yeah, I think the run into the climb on this particular course would definitely suit. Uh, maybe should we say the slightly heavier rider who likes to go off quick, and then it is a bit of a grind to the line. But let's let's just quickly talk about who who's on who's on the grid for Mitchelton Scott. We've got Adam Yates, Simon Yates, Michael Albacini, Jess Allen, Sarah Roy, and Dion Smith. So it's a, you've got a pretty stellar lineup, Matt. Yeah, I mean we've got uh, we've got uh, some some good climbing talent there, and they'll need it with that uh, last little turn off up uh, to the tower. Um, and also we've got some guys that can do the job. You know, uh, Damien Housen's shown in Grand Tours before that uh, that he can pull for a long time on on, on long climbs. And uh, I'm expecting, uh, I guess, Dion and uh, Michael Albacini to be doing a lot of the work on the flat at the start into the bottom of the climb. Well, there we go. They've actually, you can just see along the bottom of the screen here, we've got the lead group. They've only got 5Ks to go now, or the 5Ks in, should I say. Uh, nice different kits. And the A group containing the Mitchelton Scott Pros have just gone off. So they've got an eight-minute gap to shut. The course itself is around 12.1 kilometres. And those of you who are watching your nose whip, we're actually go, we're doing part of the Mountain 8 route, um, Omotopa, of course, which takes us all the way up to the epic King of the Mountains radio tower. So it's a flat start. The climb's just started now. That was for the, the lead group. This is the last group on the road. I think this is the last group. This will be the group A. You can just see Damien Housen there with that shock of yeah. uh, grey hair just moving up the outside. Very distinctive hairdo there. Um, you can just see the group here. Some big, big numbers going off early on. And they, they're going to have to... Adam there. Look at that. Four and a half watts per kilo straight out of the start. Exactly. I mean, I'm expecting them to kind of eat up the gap here. 728 is the gap. Um, but the climb itself, Matt, in a minute, we're going to throw to an interview with Simon Yates. But Matt, the climb itself is kind of in two steps, isn't it? It's gradual for uh, the first part, a couple of plateaus. Then that final sort of 800 metres to the line is absolutely brutal, isn't it? Yeah, I have to be honest here. Um, I don't turn off that much anymore. Um, if, <laughs> I do really like doing the climb, but uh, it's been a while since I've actually turned left and gone up to the tower. Uh, I tend to just keep going straight these days. Uh, but yeah, it's super steep the last couple of Ks. And, and I think that's what will make this race very interesting. Like the line is just there. You can almost see it. Uh, but that last 800 metres is going to be a real killer. No, it really is. As, as you could just see on the bottom there, we had all the the different groupings based on watts per kilogram. That basically is, um, if anybody is looking at this and, and is new new to Zwift, watts per kilogram is the amount of uh, power you can put out basically over the period of an hour. And the fitter you get and the lighter you are, the, the better your watts per kilo. And watts per kilo, um, the, the higher the number, the better you are generally going up climbs. Now, yesterday, I actually spoke to Simon Yates ahead of today's race. He's midway through that pack, which are churning along at the moment, some big, big numbers. So in just a few seconds time, we're gonna throw to a little VT of a chat with me and Simon Yates, just talking about this very kind of difficult time of the year for a lot of the pros now, and for all of us globally, but um, how he's enjoying riding on Zift nonetheless. First up, mate, this is a little bit of a strange situation for us all. I'm here in East Molesey in Surrey. You're locked down in Andorra. How's it all going? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going okay. Today was the first day that it was um, all the shops and stuff are shut. Um, but I bought plenty of stuff to survive for two weeks, so uh, I'm okay. <laughs> you're, not, you're not one of these crazy people who've been hoarding toilet paper and soup, are you? <laughs> no, but I was getting worried that when I went to the shop the other day. What? There was none left, no toilet paper left. I was like, oh, here we go. It's a, it's a real thing, but no, I got, I, got, I got enough to survive, don't worry. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, we were just chatting before we started to record that, I mean, this, this is an unprecedented series situation. So, so far, how has it kind of affected you? Or are you just taking, taking each day as it, as it comes? Um, yeah, well, with, with uh, you know, the Giro is one of my main goals of the year, and that's now been uh, postponed. Um, so really, um, you know, it's making things a little bit more difficult um, with regards to just the training side of things and, and you know, where to build for the you know to peak for for the events um but otherwise you know day-to-day -day life is 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 kind of the same you know i still train um, you know I still keep me very fit um it's just that we don't know when we, we we're gonna race again um so yeah. it's just a bit uh, a bit up in the air really 
Okay, now, it's not exactly a race tomorrow, Adam Zwift. How much do you actually know about the chop race? Tell me what you know. Um, well, I've only ever done one race on Zwift before, and um, yeah. the start was just crazy fast. Um, like, I was in the third or fourth group before I even knew the race had started. <laughs> um, right. So I'm expecting a fast start, um, at least. Um, but I've heard it's a handicap um, style type of race. Um, I believe I'm starting towards the end, um, which will make things more difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll give it a go and see how it goes. So you, I know, I understand you've actually practiced on the climb they're going to be using. It's essentially a hill climb, a 12 kilometer hill climb. There's going to be four groups, D, C, B and A. You're in the A group. And I understand you've got a few teammates riding with you as well. Yeah, so we'll have to use them as, as best as possible. I think they're very... If it's the same climb that I did today, um, a little bit of recon, um, the very first part of the race is it, it, it's on a flatter road, more of a valley road, um, before the real climb starts. So um, I think that'll be more, you know, the point where I'll have to use the guys if, if, if um, you know, if, because once you get on the climb, it's, it, you know, the, the effects of the, the, the drag are not, not the same, um, you know, just like in real life. So, um, no, I have to use them early uh, and go from there. Okay. So are you going to literally go flat stick? Are you going to treat this as a proper little race? Because it was only about half an hour effort, but you can, as you know, you can go pretty deep on Swift and uh, it would be, be pretty cool if you could catch the front group. Because ultimately, you know, a win's a win, Simon. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll take, a, I'll take as many as I can get at the minute with no racing. So, uh, no, it's going to be difficult, um, especially for me here, here in Andorra. You know, I, I live at altitude. So there's not much uh, oxygen going around, unfortunately. Oh, right. Um, but no, we'll give it a good go, and, and we'll, we'll see what the, what the outcome is. I mean, I know it is a difficult situation for everybody. You know, you, 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 can, you, take, you can take cycling out of the equation and look at the impact it's had on the world. But, but uh, having this platform to enable you to train with your teammates who, are, again, are going to be locked down in Girona, in Great Britain, over in Australia. I mean, it, it's a pretty cool platform in relation to making the best of a very, a very, very difficult situation, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and you know, a couple of years ago or whenever before Zwift, there was nothing really to to keep yourself entertained when you know you're using the home train or whatever. It was just, and, but now it's just a, it's it's a completely different world. You know, you can you can hook up with your friends and 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 ride, or you know, you can do races like we're doing we're doing tomorrow. So um, no, it's really a, a, you know a great tool that we we we're using now ourselves as as a team to the best ability. I'm going to be commentating on it with, with Matt Heyman, your DS. So expecting a you know top end performance of it, not not too much <laughs> yeah. pressure. pressure. Enjoy already. the racing. Mate. Enjoy the racing. Oh, great, uh, great to hear from Simon there, smiling through uh, adversity. But but Matt, as we just look at the the foot slopes of the climb, we've got uh, Adam Yates just putting out some big power here, picking off these riders so so easily. Of course, he's one of the world's best bike riders, especially uphill. But Matt. Um, before we move on to the sharp end of, of this race, it's, uh, it is a very, very difficult time for these riders, but having the opportunity to keep training and keep, uh, keep the kind of team spirit together is so, so important, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, look, uh, you know, he touched on a few things there in that interview. One, he's at uh, up at Andorra at 2,000 metres, which is going to be a little bit harder for him to put out the normal power that he would at, uh, at sea level. Um, but yeah, just the uncertainty, I guess, for these guys, um, you know, they've, like he said, he's been focused on the Giro for many months now, and then the goalposts have been moved. So, uh, you know, this is a great way to try and distract people. And I guess I know better than anybody that, uh, that Swift is, can be a great distraction in, uh, in difficult times. But what I really like to see here is that the boys are really working well together. They, uh, they had, uh, Alba on the front just before on the flat, and, uh, they're quite close together here on the climb. Yeah, they certainly are. They've shut down already since we played that VT. They've shut down three and a half, nearly four minutes. Now, the gap from Group A, as you can see at the bottom, nice and clear. Got some very clear stats there for us. Um, four minutes and 33. It was eight minutes. So I think, Matt, there is going to be a distinct possibility that the A group could catch up and we could have a battle royale between the Mitchell and Scott riders at the top of this climb. But the pressure's still on. They've still got a fair bit of road to cover. Yeah, that's that's true. You know, these lead riders only got two and a half K to go and uh, our guys are still at the bottom of the climb. So, um, like I said, I think it'll be exciting when we turn left and hit those steep last uh, last uh, kilometre there. 
when I, I know from from riding out on the road and on Zwift, I mean, once once you get gradients above eight nine percent, um, as we both know, Matt, being let's be honest, slightly heavier riders, uh, I remember in some some big some big mountain stages, you can lose a minute a kilometer quite easily, or even more, can't you? Especially if you really capitulate and get your pacing strategy wrong. Oh yes, I mean, and and those differences in watts per kilo, uh, they really come into play at the end, and. Uh... Yeah, look, so even though some of our riders are, uh, are quite new to this, um, they'll be a little bit more comfortable riding at, uh, at the top end of their threshold. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, exciting. We've got Sarah here in, in, in view. Um, it's a bit hard. She's in, in Group C, but a bit hard to see exactly where she is there. Um, picking off some riders from the, from the D group as she goes up here. Oh, she's looking very good there. Still put, putting out four watts a kilo, looking very, very good indeed. And that's the thing about this climb on, on, on Watopia. It's uh, an expansive world. This particular climb is very, very difficult because you think you get into a rhythm and then it plateaus and it drops down. There's many descents and plateaus as well to really break the rhythm up. So it's quite a staccato kind of effort until the top part of the climb, isn't it, Matt? It's quite a difficult one to gauge to get right. Yeah, look, you come in the bottom there, you've got quite a steep ramp at the bottom. And then, um, yeah, there's a few times there where it really flattens off. And as you said, that that messes up with your rhythm. You're kind of just feeling really comfortable at a certain pace and, and you've got to go down through the gears and then start again and, and, and try and get um, and hold in. Most of the riders really like a steady, even climb, but uh, this has got a, quite a few different uh, gradient changes. It certainly has. Still looking at Sarah here. She's got a, well, the C group here. 4.2 kilometers to go. The A group are really closing in now. I think the the lead group has actually merged a group, well, groups D and group C, if I can get my alphabet in the right order, have actually merged together now. So they're actually one group. Group D aren't too far behind them. And group A, well, one minute and 32 seconds. This is all coming together as we look at, still looking at Sarah Roy on these steep gradients. Still a fair little bit of distance to go, but the C group have four Ks to go on this route. So uh, it's, I think the actual total distance is actually 12.1 kilometers. But as me and Matt were alluding to or suggesting at the top of, the, uh, of this show is that the final part of the climb is very, very steep indeed. The climb to the radio tower, it seems to go on forever, doesn't it, Matt? It's kind of maximum pitches around 17%. But you can see the radio tower at the top, but you're almost going at walking pace. It really is exceptionally difficult, that last few minutes effort. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, there's a real sting in the tail of this one. I'm not sure who designed that. Um, and it's and it's a pretty pretty straight road, and uh, you can you can you'll be able to see a you know almost a minute ahead, just like some of the big climbs in the Giro. Oh, looking at Adam Yates here, look at him just riding through people. Um, you know, up around six watts per kilo, and and this is what these guys need to do when they're when they're competing in the, at the world's best races, uh, Tour de France, the final final climbs of the Giro. Um, they're up around six watts per kilo. It is amazing to see. It's amazing. Them. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm amazed. I, I can't get near those kind of kind of uh, power. You know, um, you know that's the difference between the climbers and the and the flatlanders. They can just hold this really high power above threshold. Here we have a flat section, like you said, that'll mess up with the rhythm a little bit. Yeah, like you see, Adam just out of the saddle is using. I mean, Adam's got really particular style of riding, isn't he? Slightly lower cadence than, than some other climbers. I mean, everybody, we, we talk about pedaling cadence, that there should be an optimum pedaling ca cadence of about 90, but different riders have different kind of styles, and Adam tends to use a slightly bigger cadence in and out of the saddle, but uh, he's a very light rider too. I mean, is he around 60, 62 kgs? Without giving too oh, much away, Matt? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I um, I don't weigh the boys. Uh, um, no, I just know that they're featherweights. Uh, um, I know that I was always, you know, if I tried to do the numbers, you know, when I was racing around 80 kilos and when you start to do the numbers of if I need to compete with these guys on a final climb and you start multiplying 80 kilos by six watts and, uh, yeah, just no way that I can hold that power sustained. Um so, yeah, look at this. He's uh, just slightly going back there, just had a little bit of a downhill um, and then just getting back into his rhythm here, back up to, to six watts per kilo. Well, and as I say, it will, will drop out down a little bit. It's far easier to generate power when the road is going upwards. The power always drops off. It's difficult to keep on top of the gears when the road flattens and goes down, but then it lifts up again. It really is, as we said before, a difficult climb to get your rhythm in. But this is great stuff. Seeing Adam Yates... Or he's got A dot damn Yates there. I like the way he's played with his name there. Almost <laughs> sounds like a rapper. 
uh, sort of like Will I Am or something like that. But uh, he's absolutely flying through this group, just holding just a touch under six watts a kilo. And if any of you on Zwift, I mean, if you are, if you have been riding on Zwift, you know what the score is, you know what it is. I think we're just looking at, uh, is that the D group? I think the, we, found the, a, we found the leader there, I think, maybe. Um, yeah. yeah. I think the, the leader. Looks like the leader might have actually, um, I don't know if he's crossed the line or not, I'm a little bit confused there, but uh, the D group, it looks like riders just, well, I think we've got a little bit of distance to the top top of the climb here, but uh, that was, certainly was the leader. Definitely some still pretty classy riders out in front in the D group, but uh, there we go. Yeah, I think we've got the lead group 8.7 Ks and the D group 8.4 Ks now. So I think actually some riders are dropping back. So I think we've got group A, are about to catch the lead group. So the D group now are last on the road, or the, the majority of the D group, C group second, and group A only a few seconds now behind the lead group, Matt. So already they've eaten up most of the uh, the advantage that they had uh, had to chase. Yeah, and you could see at the start, even on the flat, um, such a big, big A group bunch, and, and they were all working well together at the start, and they... they uh, they really ch chopped away at that time right from the very word go. Um, and uh, they're almost all together now. So, I mean, that's the idea to give everybody a chance in this race and, and have everybody come together and all the groups are mixed mixed together at the moment. Now, Matt, this isn't events already. There's a whole week of events, aren't there? Michigan Scott presented by Bike Exchange. They've got a series uh, going throughout the week just to keep them, um, to keep them on their toes, I guess. Yeah, look, uh, you know, if this is not your thing to be racing 12K straight up a hill, uh, either at uh, 7 o'clock at night in Australia or, or 9 o'clock in the morning in, in Europe, we've got a bunch of other events um, almost twice a day and, and some of them are more just general rides. You've got an opportunity as well to, to do an interval session with the team, something that one of our coaches has written. Um, and that's, you know, a group ride. Everybody sticks together, but you're able to do a professional uh, interval session or um, we've just got some other group rides. So it's it's uh, just a way, um, you know, the team's been pretty well known from the backstage pass and, and always valued its fans. And it's just a way for us to stay in touch with everybody while we're not able to, to race at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's not just a way to stay in touch. I mean, when you think about, you know, with, to talk a little bit broader, Matt, about this whole very, very difficult situation, you know, when teams have got sponsors that have invested, it's just another, it's just another way of, of paying back the sponsors as well as well as engaging with the fans keeping the riders fit it keeps everybody happy okay it's a little bit of an unorthodox way to do it but we've got the technologies we've to got the platform so, so why not do it yeah look i think all over the world people are having to work from home and uh we're no other at the moment so we've got some pictures here of damien Housen definitely working from home today um <laughs> here on the climb so uh no, yeah, we 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 uh, you know very much appreciate the support of all our sponsors, and um, you know there's an opportunity here to to still be in front of cycling fans, and um, and, and and we're taking that opportunity. Indeed, I've just spotted a Wes Salzberger there, a rider I know very well. Uh, just a couple of seconds behind Damien Housen there with an official win. I think he actually worked. Does actually work for Zwift now. So Wes Salzberger, an ex-pro, still looking at the stats of Damien Housen here. And there's Wes, yeah. the split over to Wes Salzberger, a rider that we both know very well, still keeping himself pretty fit, 346 watts a kilo. So 336 watts, just over five watts a kilo. He's looking pretty good, Matt. Yeah, 170 heart rate. Um, yeah, used to race with Wes, and he's uh, part of Swift in Australia. So uh, he's just trying to chase Damien down here, and they're picking off riders from other groups. Um, so this is this is the, the nice part, you know, that everybody's coming together here towards the top of the climb and uh, everybody gets to, to, you know, race their group as well as try and hold on to the pros when they come past. I just uh, spotted uh, Kim Little there as well, a very well-known uh, racer on the Zwift community up near the front of the A group. Alex West is up. A lot of big names. Alex West there. Just on the right-hand side, you can see his name highlighted right in for Canyon ZCC, one of the first actual uh, esports only teams they'll be racing this week we've got a Zwift race uh, tomorrow there is Alex West a former Zwift Academy finalist there's some really classy riders he knows this climb very very well indeed there we go he's a powerfully built rider because of purely the amount of watts he can generate he's, he's going to be flying up this climb they are 450 watts a kilo it's going to be very very difficult for him to catch we've still got a, a little bit of a distance to go. I still think a couple of kilos 
a couple of kilometers to go and the hardest part of the climb. The average gradient around this part is kind of eight, nine percent, pitches of 10 percent. And then there's that horrible left hand. I think I can't remember if it's a right or a left hand to take you up to the radio mast because there's a couple of ways up to the radio mast. You can come up the descent or you can come up the climb or vice versa. But uh, the worst yeah. part of the climb is still to come. So riders here, Matt, are definitely going to have to have held something back. Because if you've ridden this first section too hard and you capitulate on the steep section, there's no turning back, is there? Yeah, well, we're just about to turn onto it right here. Um, yeah, look, uh, you know, five, 600 metres to go, but they've still got to get up to the tower. Um, and, and there is an advantage. You, you talked about uh, it's Alex, isn't it? He's, he's raced on here a lot. And uh, there's a big advantage if you've raced on Swift and, and, and you know how the game works. And, and it, just like racing on the road, you need to really work out the tactics. And you can see here that he's just holding the wheel there, just a, a little bit of a run off that. And now we're going to hit that... Uh, very very steep section look it's already up to 13 percent here up to the finish line yeah, it is you can just see uh, on the right hand side that's where they're heading to and having ridden this on numerous occasions myself it seems as if you're just going at walking pace and uh, and you kind of are uh, because of the gradients it picks up to around 17 percent but there's two riders neck and neck at the moment a japanese rider alongside alex west at the moment. there's a couple of riders just in front who we can't quite see but west putting in an absolutely fantastic performance but the big question is where are the nearest riders from mitchelton scott that is the big big question they're not too far behind or they're a little bit of a distance i think matt it looks as if given the amount of road that we've got left here for i think this is simon adam yates on the road i think well even given Adam's class, the form he's in, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to, to, to peg back nearly three or 500 metres of tarmac now, Matt. Yeah, look, I don't think they're going to, they're going to get up there. I think they've caught most of uh, the other grades. I can only really see um, a few A graders in front of him there. But, uh, you know, great effort. Um, you know, it was a late call up for here, but uh, not today. I don't think they're going to get up. I think uh, he's about to turn right, so he's a few hundred metres behind as we go here into the front of the race. Um, but, you know, the guys are in hard training. Uh, you know, they've, they've been called up pretty late for this race and we always knew it would be tough uh, to get uh, to get a one up on some of these guys that uh, are very, very comfortable with this E style of racing. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of community riders. I mean, that's the thing about racing on Zwift. Um, it is exceptionally specialist, but so great to see that more and more riders from the road you know, road pros are coming and using the Zwift platform. And, and again, it's, it's just wonderful to see some of the best riders in the world here today. I mean, just a reminder, if you just tuned in to this stream, it is uh, the Chop Challenge, the Mitchelton Scott Chop Challenge presented by Bike Exchange. Adam Yates, Simon Yates, Michael Albacini, Jess Allen, Dion Smith and Sarah Roy, all from Mitchelton Scott have uh, started this handicap race. We're just watching Adam Yates at the moment. He is now on at the final part of this climb. It's part of the figure eight course on Watopia. And there is Adam Yates, as you said, Matt, working from home and working very, very hard indeed. Even down to that final bit of a detail with the Red Sox. Uh, yes, we know that he, uh, that, that he likes to always have a touch of red uh, somewhere. And he's, he's got the nice long red socks there. So you're always able to, uh, you know, just make that avatar, just uh, personalize it just that little bit. And he's just coming up this last steep bit. Um, uh, I know that uh, Simon said that he did a bit of recon and uh, checked out the course yesterday. Um, so if you didn't know this was coming, you'd get quite a shock at the end here. 14% as we head up to the finish line. Indeed. We're just looking at Sarah Roy now. She's not too far behind at all. So some great riding by Sarah Roy. She's just taken that little bit of a slope downhill before the kick up to the line. So Sarah Roy's done an exceptional ride here. She is an exceptional climber, as we know. She's got that little race leader or the ride.